The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each week by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, are the makers of the wonderful new Kraft pasteurized processed cheese and slices. Those perfect slices of extra mellow-tasting processed cheese that are formed, then wrapped and sealed for you right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant. You'll find them in your grocer's dairy case. Eight fine slices in every neat package. And those packages really are neat, and they hold eight delicious slices. Look for them when you shop tomorrow. Those neat square packages marked... Craft Deluxe Slices. Well, the great Gildersleeve considers himself a very lucky man. He's head of the water department, head of a happy little family, and he's headed for home. Why, George, it's always nice to get home on a cold winter evening. Yes, sir. After a big dinner, there's nothing like sitting by the fire with your little family. Yeah. Look at those two snowbirds huddled together. Say, after dinner, I think I'll go over and sit by the fire with Catherine. <laughs> Listen to those little birds cheep. Ross Morton. Oh, that snowbird. <laughs> Mrs. Thompson's sister. Well, I'm not going to get trapped by that siren's call this time. Come over here, you naughty boy, you. Hello there, Vicky. Where have you been, Throckmorton? Me? Well, I haven't seen you since you and the family were over at my sister's for Sunday dinner, and that's been over a month ago. You well. I hoped you'd be giving little Vicky a ring. Yeah, I did. I phoned you the next evening, but you were out. Oh, well, I must have been spending the evening at the library. You yeah, library. <laughs> I know who was taken out, and it wasn't a book. Why didn't you call me again? Well, I did. But every time I phoned, they said you had a date with a fellow named Schultz. Oh, now, Throckmorton, why don't you try me this evening? Yeah, what happened to Schultz? Oh, he left town. He did? When? This afternoon. <laughs> I just took him to the train. Uh, can I take you home? No, thanks. Uh, that is, uh, I live right down the street. All right. But really, Throckmorton, I haven't a thing to do tonight. And I feel I can hint to you, since Bronco's my nephew and he's married to your niece. What about tonight? Well, I thought I'd go over and see you. Yes? Yeah, I mean, I was planning to... Uh... What are you going to do, Throckmorton? Let's say I'm spending the evening at the library. <laughs> hey, that Vicky's an attractive girl. But what a flirt she is. Well, no woman can wind me around her finger. Bill's leave, I'm proud of you. You stood like the rock of Gibraltar. You wonder where the little family is. Hello! Where is everybody? Oh, hello, Unky. Welcome home. Yeah, well, Marjorie, did you have a nice day, my dear? Wonderful, Unky. Good. Where's Leroy? And Bronco, the boy husband. Well, Leroy's out back building a snowman, and Bronco's still working. Oh? I thought he closed his real estate office at 5 o'clock. Oh, he has a sideline now. After hours, he sells calendars. He calendars? Uh-huh. He says a lot of business firms buy them this time of year, and with the baby coming, he wanted to make some extra money. Yeah, why, George, that Bronco's quite a boy. Hello, Marge, honey. Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Watch it, Bronco. <laughs> How's the calendar business? Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm red hot. I've taken three orders for calendars since 5 o'clock. Mike's Bowling Alley and the Corner Gas Station. Yeah, well, that's only two. Who's the third? You. <laughs> <laughs> Me? But, Bronco, what would I do with calendars? Use them for goodwill advertising, Mr. Gildersleeve. 
Your water customers will feel better about paying their bills if you give them a calendar. Well, you may have something there. Everybody isn't too prompt about paying. Oh, Unky, you're going to buy some calendars? Sure, what the heck. Oh, fine. Now, uh, which of these pictures do you want on your calendars? Yeah, let's well, see. Hmm, mostly dogs and girls. Uh, how do you like this one, Mr. Gildersleeve? The Irish setter. Yeah, I like this one, the Scotch lassie. <laughs> I think you're right, Unky. There's nothing like a pretty girl for a calendar. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but she's reserved. She is? By the bowling alley. Yeah, I might have known. Nice pins. <laughs> uh, you can put anybody's picture on the calendar, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I can? Sure. Well, give me time to think about it, Bronco. Uh, whatever you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come on, Marge, honey. Tell me everything that happened today. All right, darling. See you later, Unky. Ta-ta. Mm. Ooh, I, I could use my picture on the calendar. No, girls are prettier. <laughs> so what about Catherine? Bye, George. I'll hurry over there right after dinner. <laughs> Bye, George. This is a great idea. Putting out a calendar for the water department with my girl's picture on it. I'm glad I thought of it. Well... Icicles hang from the eaves. Pretty. Hello, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. Mm, it's chilly out here. Come on inside. Yeah, thanks. Mmm, nice and toasty in here. Yes, it is. Let me take your coat. Yeah, thank you. Come over by the fire and sit down. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir, I've got a wonderful idea. Oh? Let me see your profile. You've seen my profile. Yes, but my delinquent water customers haven't. What are you talking about? Now, tilt your nose a little. Let me fluff out that red hair. <laughs> Why are you looking at me with such a critical eye? I was just wondering how you'd look hanging on the wall. <laughs> you what? Yeah, I mean, well... The water department is putting out some 1951 calendars. And it occurred to me that you'd make a hit with the customers if your picture appeared on the calendar. Oh, well, that's a very nice thought, Throckmorton. But I'm not a model. I'm a registered nurse. Well, I think you'd register with the customers, too. <laughs> You're pretty cute. Thank you, Throckmorton. But I couldn't possibly do that. Why don't you get somebody else? I'm not interested in getting anybody else. If I can't have you, I won't have anybody. Oh. Now you're acting like a little boy. No, I'm not. But, Catherine, you'd mean a lot to me if you'd let me use your picture in your nurse's cap and uniform. Oh. Oh, well, if it's that kind of picture... Then you'll do it. Well, <laughs> if you really want me to... You bet. And I'll put a caption on your picture. Our water is as dependable as your nurse. Always on tap. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Step in, Leroy. Gosh, aren't you swell to let me come to the office with you this morning? Well, my secretary is off for the Thanksgiving holidays. Maybe you can help me run the water department. Hey, can I cut off somebody's water? <laughs> no, Leroy. But I see Hazel left some water bills in the desk. You can seal the envelope. Keen. I like the glue. What a boy who likes the glue. What are you going to do, Unc? Well, I have to get the water department calendar ready for the printers. Nice picture of Catherine in uniform. Huh, Leroy? Yeah. Gosh, how'd you ever get Miss Milford to be on your calendar? She's so dignified. Yeah, my boy, your old uncle has a way with women. No kidding. How'd you talk her into it, Unc? Let me in on your secret. I ought to know these things. I'm growing up. <laughs> well, Leroy, the first thing a man has to learn is never let a woman wrap you around her finger. Protect yourself at all times. That doesn't sound easy. Well, it takes an old smoothie. <laughs> you learn by experience. And you've had a lot of experience, huh, Unc? <laughs> well, I... You, 
Who's that? Hey, it's Miss Chase. Vicki? Yeah, I wonder what she wants. Oh, good morning, Leroy. Hi. Well, Vicki. Oh, Throckmorton, I found you at last. I had the most terrible time locating the water department. Oh? I get lost so easily. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering why I'm here. Yeah, yes, I am. Well, Bronco came over to see his mother last night, and he was telling us about your dilemma. My dilemma? Well, that you're looking for a girl for your calendar. Well, here I am. You? But, Vicky, I've already made a selection. Oh, that's too bad. And I brought all these photographs down to show you. <laughs> Sorry. No use looking at them, I'm afraid. Uh, here's one of me at the beach. Yeah, but there's no use looking at... Yeah. <laughs> Unc, I thought you said there was no use looking at them. Leroy, go see those envelopes. What a character. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask me to sit down, Trothmorton? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I guess you're tired carrying so many pictures around. <laughs> Whose picture is this? The nurse. The nurse? Oh, yeah, I was going to put her on the calendar. Trothmorton, I'm surprised at you. You are? Look at my picture. I've been looking. <laughs> now, which would be better for the water department, a girl in a nurse's uniform or a girl in the water? Well, it's hard to argue about that. Oh, come on. Be nice to Vicky. I've always wanted my picture published, and you aren't giving me a chance. You well... If you use my picture, I'll give you a kiss. Well, I believe in giving everybody a chance. I want to be fair. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you're a darling. What happened? <laughs> you promised to use my picture. Thank you, Tom Morton, and bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. No, wait. Vicky. Oh, she's gone. Now what will I tell Catherine? <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Friends, cheese lovers everywhere are excited about the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices. And no wonder, here's the best-flavored, most mellow, pasteurized processed cheese you've ever tasted in the most perfect slices you've ever seen. That's right, Kraft processed cheese and slices are really different. You see, they're made differently. Instead of being cut from a loaf like other sliced cheese, Kraft slices are formed by an amazing new craft invention that captures extra cheese flavor, wonderfully mellow flavor in every perfect slice. And right after they're made, these perfect slices of processed cheese are wrapped, ate to a neat package, and sealed by craft. This way, they stay perfect and protected all the way to your kitchen. So you'll never find a sliver, a dried edge, or a broken piece in a package of craft slices. All eight are perfect and so easy to separate. Why, it's easier to peel them apart than it is to peel a banana. See for yourself. You'll want to get several packages, so you'll always have them on hand for wonderfully quick and easy snacks and sandwiches anytime. Look for this wonderful processed cheese when you shop tomorrow. Convenient, delicious, Kraft Deluxe Slices. Get back to the great Gildersleeve. He's home now and finding it difficult to answer some of his nephew's questions. I don't get it, Unc. You said a woman couldn't wind you around her finger. Well, Leroy, you're too young to understand these things. I don't get it. How did Miss Chase talk you into using her picture? It doesn't add up. Hey, my boy, it isn't so much a matter of arithmetic as it is chemistry. <laughs> yeah? Well, I got a chemistry set, but I don't get loused up the way you do. Yes, yes. You know, Miss Gildersleeve? Yep. Hello, Bertie. Can I have one of your 1951 calendars for the kitchen? Yeah, of course, Bertie. That's nice. Miss Marjorie tells me you're going to have a picture of your cute little nurse on it. You well. Heck no. He's going to have a picture of Miss Chase on it. Miss Chase? Mr. Gildersleeve, what made you change your mind? Chemistry. 
But I don't get it. <laughs> oh, use. Miss Kilsleeve, I've been thinking. If you promise to use Miss Milford's picture, and then you turn around and promise to use Miss Chase's picture, couldn't that put you behind eight ball? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Kelsey, that does put you behind eight balls. You know, Albert. Yes, sir, you may not know it, but that water department calendar's got you in hot water. Well, could be. Yes, sir, the water commissioner's in hot water. <laughs> you blew hot and cold, so you're in hot water. You're all right, Mr. Bertie. Kelsey, do you know where the water commissioner is? Yes, That's Bertie. right, he's in hot water. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll go down to Peavy's. The hot water commissioner needs a cold Coke. <laughs> Gilder's sleeve, the old smoothie. Phooey. I shouldn't have talked Catherine into this. Say, wait a minute. I did talk her into it. She didn't want her picture in the calendar in the first place. So what am I worried about? I'll just call her and tell her I'm using another picture. Of course, I don't have to tell her whose picture I'm using. Gildersleeve, you, you are an old smoothie. Hello, Phoebe. Ah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can your friendly neighborhood druggist do for you? you? Give me a Coke and give me a nickel. Give you a Coke and give you a nickel? That's right, Phoebe. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, if I give you a Coke, you should give me a nickel. But, Peavy... Why should I give you a nickel? Peavy, here's a dime. But the Coke's only a nickel. Yeah, I know that. I want to make a phone call. I thought you wanted a Coke. Oh, my goodness, Peavy. I want a nickel Coke, and I want a nickel for the phone. No, oh, why didn't you say so? Over. You uh, want me to mix the Coke now, or wait until after the phone call? You mix it now. This telephone call won't take long. See, I promised Catherine I'd put her picture on the water department calendars. <laughs> but I've changed my mind. I'm using another girl. Mm, isn't that dangerous? Yeah, don't you worry, Peavy. The old smoothie knows how to handle these things. <laughs> my, my. If you don't believe me, I'll leave the telephone booth door open. <laughs> yeah. Then you can hear me in action. I can hear you with the door closed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Katie will be tickled to death to get out of this. I talked her into it, and I'll let her talk me out of it. Hello? Hello, Catherine. This is Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. I'm so glad you called. You're about that picture for my calendar, Catherine. That's what I want to talk to you about. You do? Good. I'm so excited about it. Yeah? All the doctors want calendars for their offices. Yeah, they do. And Mother wants to send them to all our relatives. You, but Catherine... I'm terribly flattered that you picked me, but of course you would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> you know, I may have a better picture taken. Do you have any new ideas about the calendar? Yeah, well, none I can talk about now. Oh. Well, then I'd better go to the hospital. Yeah, I'll be going to the hospital, too. <laughs> Bye. You yeah, I... Yeah. Here's your coat, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, thanks, Peavy. And an aspirin. You offer. <laughs> Sounds like the old smoothie hit a few bumps. <laughs> Don't rub it in, Peavy. No, sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. I guess I shouldn't. But if I were in your shoes, I'd be tempted not to put out a calendar at all. You would? I'd do like the Russians. When you're caught in an embarrassing situation, just walk out. <laughs> Say... I don't have to put out a calendar. I promised Bronco I'd buy them, but I'll just pay him his commission. He'll be happy. And then I don't have to use either girl. Do you want two more nickels to call and tell him that? No, thanks, Petey. I'm paying Bronco the commission. Let him tell him. Good old Bronco. What a salesman. <laughs> Bronco, I don't understand. Well, to make a long story short, Miss Milford, Mr. Gildersleeve has decided not to put out a calendar this year. Oh, well, that's a quick change, even for Throckmorton. Uh, Bronco, just why did he send you over to tell me this? Well... (laughs) 
<laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, that Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> he gets into the worst pickles. Oh, how sour is this one? <laughs> well, perhaps I shouldn't, but I guess I can tell you, Miss Milford, you're so understanding. Oh, very. Well, after promising to use your picture, you can understand what happened to Mr. Gildersleeve when another girl came along. Uh, Rocco, could this other girl be your Aunt Vicky? Uh, how did you know? Woman's intuition. Uh, Vicky must be quite a person. Well, she's nothing like you, Miss Milford. She's the exotic type. Oh. Well, and not that you couldn't be, of course, if you wanted to, but you wouldn't want to. Oh, wouldn't I? Of course not. You're just a good, old-fashioned girl. I am? You're dependable and reliable. You're the wholesome type. Uh, thanks, pal. <laughs> what I mean is, you're not a flirt. You're a dignified, registered nurse. Well, tonight I'm off duty. Ooh. <laughs> Nice of Bronco to get me out of this, Marjorie. It was worth the commission. Oh, you can depend on Bronco, Unky. He'll fix it for you. Yeah. Miss Gilkey. Yes, Bertie? Well, I see the turkey we have tomorrow. No, thanks, Bertie. I don't trust myself with that turkey. I feel so good I might eat it all tonight. Yes, sir. You lost your appetite there for a while, didn't you? Well, I... <laughs> Poor Unky. Women can do that to him. You will never again. No, sir. I am now immune to feminine wiles. Yes, sir. You'll never be lured into another jam by a pretty face. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't. Oh, somebody at the door. I'll get it! Yeah, I'll get it, Bertie. Oh, I better run upstairs, Anki. My hair's in curlers. You're all right, my dear. Good evening, Throckmorton. You well, Catherine, come right in. Catherine? <laughs> What, 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 what an unexpected pleasure. Thank you. You are right, George. I scarcely recognized you at first. New lipstick? No, just more of it. Oh. Here, let me take your coat. You're so gallant, Throckmorton. You are. <laughs> Say, new hairdo. Up sweet? Mm. Do you like it? Very much. He gets it up off your bare shoulders. Nice. I hope you think so. Yeah, I do. Shall we sit together here by the fire? Yeah, I like that idea, too. Mm. <sighs> I think the fire gives us enough light without this lamp. Don't you... Well, it's a nice way of cutting down the light bill. <laughs> mm, my hands are so cold. I think I'll hold them near the fire. You might get burned, Catherine. Let me rub them. Stimulate circulation. All right. Throckmorton. Yes, Catherine. You aren't rubbing them. You're just holding them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. Me too. Mm. This is living. It isn't bad. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Catherine, you're wonderful. Throckmorton. Yeah? About Bronco, do you think he's working too hard? Bronco? Why do you ask? Well, I saw him for a minute this afternoon, and he was babbling something about you not putting out calendars. Oh, you know, that. Well, you see, Catherine, I decided... Rock, Morton, your coat collar is turned up in the back. You do? <laughs> Let Catherine turn it down. There. My, what nice, broad shoulders. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Do you mind if I rest my head? Mind? Not at all. Hmm. Now, what were you saying about the calendars? Yeah, I don't know what was I saying. <laughs> that uh, Bronco was confused? Well, somebody's confused. You do want calendars with Catherine's picture on them, don't you, little boy? Yeah, I'll say I do. <laughs> That's fine. Now I have to go home. Home? I think it's wonderful that you're using my picture. Yes, but... Well, now what do I tell Vicky? You'll just leave you trapped again. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, if the folks at your house just can't agree as to the kind of pasteurized processed cheese they like best, don't worry, because Kraft Deluxe Slices come in five delicious kinds. So everyone can have his favorite, whether it's Kraft American, Kraft American with pimentos added, Kraft Brick with that grand, deep-down rich taste, Nut Sweet, Kraft Swiss, or Sharp Old English brand. No matter what variety you like best, each neat package contains eight perfect slices of delicious processed cheese. You'll want several kinds on hand always for fine-tasting snacks and sandwiches you can fix at a moment's notice. Look for them in your grocer's dairy case, the five delicious varieties of Kraft Deluxe Slices. things. There's nothing I could do. Uh-oh. Uh, Throckmorton, why don't you come over to my house this afternoon for Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah, thanks. But I'm having Thanksgiving dinner here with the little family. Yeah, and is he thankful? Thanks, Leroy. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Brenner, Kathy Lewis, Shirley Mitchell, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's a quick, pleasant way to make leftovers more delicious. Just add a little Kraft prepared mustard and you'll add a lot of tang. Hidden flavors in boiled ham, sausage, most any meat pop right out. Every bite tastes better. Now you can get two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who prefer a milder flavor, and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds in your pantry. Then with every meat dish, hot or cold, just add a little mustard, and you'll add a lot of tang. Kraft prepared mustard. For a half hour of spine-tingling excitement, be sure to hear The Falcon next Sunday over the station. Check your newspaper for time of broadcast, and listen to The Falcon solve The Case of the Stooges' Errand. <laughs> Here comes that unconventional gentleman, Groucho Marx, on NBC. <laughs>